So hey guys, this video is going to be for probably more geared towards beginner gardeners, but maybe you've been gardening for a long time and you need some method to calm the madness. I am a planner by trade, so I've been promising you guys my garden planning video. So I'm gonna put this in three parts, otherwise a lot of information might get lost. So part one is gonna be um, how, like what is my mindset when I go into planning a garden? Um, the second video is why it's important to keep a garden journal. And then the third video is gonna be what's my garden plans for this year. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We're gonna do something a little different because I do keep my garden journal on a spreadsheet. Now you don't have to do that. You could keep your garden journal written in a notebook. So whatever works for you. But for me, I need uh, structure and order. So a uh, spreadsheet works for me. So I'm gonna take you guys over to the computer and talk you through kind of my thought process. Okay. So welcome to my <laughs> madness of Rachel's brain. This is my garden journal. And I started this process in 2017 because 2016 was my first year gardening. And I realized very quickly I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> Meaning that I, I had no concept of how much food I needed to grow in order to harvest enough to preserve. So I kept a very detailed and have this has grown over the last two years too as I've gotten wiser about what do I need to track. So I thought me sharing some of my learnings with you as we go throughout these seri this series will help you avoid missing some of the key information when you garden journal that I um, missed early on. So where we're going to start today is, like I said, we're just going to focus on what is my mindset when I garden plan. So I'm going to use 2018 as an example. Um, and you're going to see, and if you're watching this on a mobile device, I'm sorry if you can't read like the tabs real well. Uh, you may want to watch it back either on your TV or your computer screen so it's a little bit bigger. But the very first thing that I start out with when I think about what do I want to garden is first off, I know what my family loves to eat and I truly only garden what it is we like to eat. Now I might experiment with a couple fun things like in 2017, I grew eggplant just cause I had never grown it and we liked it okay, but never enough to waste garden space again to grow. But I look at what do I want to grow? Um, I, I'm already thinking about what method I want um, to preserve my harvest, whether it's freezing, canning, juicing, dehydrating, all those kinds of things. And then I say, what is my goal to harvest? So if we just take example number one, spinach, I've still yet to figure out how to grow enough spinach. <laughs> I always try to plant more and more every year. My goal was to um, just as, and this isn't at all what I'd love to have, it's just I've yet to harvest enough to put enough away. So let me just try to put away two gallon like freezer bags of spinach. And I was only able to harvest three quarters of that. Now we ate a lot during the year, so that probably played into it. But regardless, I'm really, really trying to learn. <clears throat> um, peas. Peas was another one that I really, really focused hard on last year to grow enough peas. I wanted to put up 12 quarts. I only put up seven quarts. So I know I still yet need to plant more peas than I planted last year. Um, carrots, guys, you know how many carrots I had, but my goal was 40 quarts and I only, um, preserved 28 quarts. Now, also what I've learned to that is my goal was probably more than I needed. I think the 28 quarts is plenty to suffice Todd and I. So those kinds of things will adjust too. You're going to use then your harvest and you're going to be like, 
do I actually need to harvest that much or do I not? So let me see if I can find another good example. Um, one that always gets me is um, jams and uh, jellies. So I still have a ton of jelly from 2016 year. So I didn't har um, can any jelly other than peach jam. Peach jam was is my diehard favorite and I was all out of that. So I did can some peach jam. So anyway, that's kind of my mindset when I just start thinking about what kind of garden do I want to grow? From that, then I'll go into, okay, then how much seeds do I need? How, how many starts do I need? All of that. Now, in 2018, I wasn't quite that mature thinking how many seeds do I need because I just knew how many square feet I wanted to plant. And I got in a pickle in a couple scenarios. One was with my green beans and maybe my peas, I ended up not having enough seeds. And so this year when I planned my 2019 garden, I know using the square foot um, gardening calculation, how many seeds per square feet I need. So I'm able then to know when I order my package of seeds from in my gardener, he typically will say how many seeds are in a package. So then I know how many seeds packages I need to buy. But for 2018 purposes, um, let me scroll over so you can see exactly what we're talking about. So rhubarb, this was a good example. I wanted two transplants. I knew the method that I wanted to start my seeds, whether it was going to be winter sowing, direct sowing, or um, direct transplants from buying starts. So I actually winter sowed my rhubarb in mid-January. I actually transplanted it, and these are my notes, so I know when I did it that I go back and fill this information in on May 9th, and where did I plant it? I planted them in my food forest. So that's kind of then, I guess, starting from a planning mind frame, I at least have an idea of where I want to plant, how much of something I want to plant, so I know how much starts I either need to purchase or how many seeds I need to start whether it's winter sowing or direct sowing. Let me take you then to the actual garden. So then I map out my garden. So this was my 2018 garden plan and this is what my 2018 garden space looked like. Um, I had this potato patch was my first ever Ruth Stout potato patch. So I knew I planted all my potatoes in there. I already have the two existing strawberry beds where my garlic had already been planted from the fall before. And then um, I just plan out. So you'll see like here, like example carrots. I know that I can fit 16 carrot seeds in each square foot space. And what I do from there is I actually will print this out at work when I'm at work and I take this with me to the garden. And this is my garden planning guide. Another thing I track is our orchard plantings. Um, so everything that is colored is um, existing in the orchard today. You will see things like pumpkin, honeydew melon. Um, I think over here, yep, I've got watermelon. Those are annuals that I'll plant throughout my orchard um, to continue that wonderful trio system for all the beneficials. And then you'll see also um, I have future plans built in this orchard plan. So I'm going to do a whole nother row of blueberries. I want to put in an asparagus patch, straight rows of lavender, and then a, um, a grove of locust trees at the end. It's not just, doesn't just have to be for vegetable gardeners. You can use it if you're managing future orchard plantings. So that's probably all I have to say for today's video. Um, I'm really excited to show you more of this journal and how it's evolved and kind of maybe even when I talk about the next video and the garden journaling to share with you, you'll see it. Um, how in 2017, I, I really didn't know what I needed to track. In 2018, I'm tracking a little bit more and a little bit more. And then in 2019, how much more mature it is. That's how I garden here, so hope it was a little helpful to you, and uh, 
yeah. So I hope you like that. And if you guys have any questions that I didn't quite cover, I didn't quite know how to share that really well with you, but I did promise to share it with you. But if you have any questions or comments or want advice on anything from a fairly new gardener myself, but I have been quite successful using this thing that helps me keep everything in track, um, leave them down in the comment section below. And of course, we respond almost immediately. So we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So I hope you guys liked it. And if you think it'll help somebody else, go ahead and share this video with them. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.